have a speech ready, hand it to my coaches, and sit around, they'd sit around that table, they'd look, read it and pass it to the next person, and she'd read it and pass it to the other person, and the last person would get the speech. Threw it behind her head and said, what else you got? Wow. I have spent four, five, and six hours writing that speech, and you're just gonna throw it behind your head like that, huh? Just let it hit the floor. <laughs> okay, what else you got, Henry? Rewriting, rehearsing, and I'm talking about physical pain. I remember one night, man, I, I was trying to memorize my speech, and this was a little bit difficult. I was having trouble because the time was short, and I had headphones on. And man, I'd listen to that speech over and over again. I, I dictated my speech in a, a recorder over and over again that night. I listened to that speech and got up the next morning, and my ear, I felt like somebody had cut my ear off because I slept on that side, which I wasn't, I tried to sleep, I try. I, I kid you not, I tried to sleep on my back, but I got comfortable and I curled up with those sheets, man, and I just rolled over, and that earphone was on there and it cut the circulation off to my ear the whole night. And I, once again, cried like a baby until that ear came back to life. Pain, y'all, that's just a little bit of the pain that you experience when you work hard at something. Mm. Memorizing that speech over and over again, Walking down the hallway, saying my speech, my kids looking at me like I'm crazy. Did you, are you talking to me? No, I'm talking to myself, man. Leave me alone. I'm going over my speech. Being in the bathroom, in front of the mirror, looking at my hand gestures, trying to learn how to use the stage, this part, that part, go back to the middle, eye contact, and all of these things that I had to remember and do after I memorized my speech. Hard work, y'all. We're talking about enduring the pain. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 5. Say that, read that with me. Good planning and hard work lead to prosperity. If I was going to get to the point where I was a professional speaker, a paid speaker, it was going to come from good planning and hard work. You've heard this said before. The only place where success comes before work is the dictionary. Hard work, folks. Preparation for prosperity is painful. And before I knew it, I won the club contest, and at the second level of the competition, I learned the difference between talent and preparation. Let me share with you why, I'm, why, why I highlight that. You do understand that some people are just more talented than others, right? That's, that's fair, right? Okay, because he gave one steward one talent, and he gave another five talents, okay? I can sing, but Michael Jackson? <laughs> How do you even spell that? S-A-A-A-A-N-G. That brother could sing. I mean, I don't think there will ever be another male soprano. And not just even be able to hit the high notes, but do it with ease. It seemed effortless, and then combine all of those things with dance movements and choreography and be able to play all those things. And I couldn't understand it. Y'all understand the difference between singing and what Michael Jackson does. Try to sing a Michael Jackson song. I, I ain't talking about singing falsetto like this. Mm -mm, go for it, like he goes for it. I ain't even gonna try to do it. Yeah. If you ever watched the Way You Make Me Feel video, Michael Jackson starts off his video, it's all quiet. And he's walking next to this chick, right? She got the big hair going on, her hair bigger than her body is, right? <laughs> and he walks off, it's all quiet, and he stands next to the woman, and he rears back and goes, how's that song start off? <laughs> yeah, you knock me off my feet, nah, baby, then hit that note. I can't, I, I will not destroy my vocal cords trying to do that. Only Michael Jackson can do it, man. I couldn't believe it, and I tried that thing one time. I got by myself one time, and I tried to hit that note he hit. I'm just glad nobody else was around. <laughs> and you know what? It's a good thing. Your vocal cords will actually recover after a while. Once you shred them like that, you're trying to be like Michael Jackson, you shred your vocal cords, they will come back after about, take about a week. Don't, mm -mm. Michael Jackson is a whole nother beast. So some people have more talents than others is, is, is how I got on that. And when I got to the second level of the competition, I learned the difference because there was a guy at the second level of the competition of the International Speech Contest, man, there was a guy, I, I ain't gonna lie to y'all, when I first saw him, I was intimidated. He just looked like a speaker. I kid you not. I mean, he had on the baddest suit I ever seen in my life. And when he walked, his suit was working with him. 
and it was flowing in the wind. There wasn't a smudge on it, man. Double-breasted, tie-matched, handkerchief in there. Man, his hair was slicked back. He had the little glasses on. And he got to the lectern and spoke like this and enunciated every syllable, and waxed eloquent for about seven minutes and 15 seconds. <laughs> and he was doing all these things and had all of this stuff going for him, and I didn't. His suit was doing things that my suit just wasn't doing. <laughs> His, his, his hair was just, you know, <laughs> not mine. <laughs> but this brother got up there and read a speech. Read a speech. And I said to myself, he got up there and put up this thing and put out his papers like this. And I looked at him, he went first, and I looked back at the judges. And he started reading his speech. And it was good. It was a good speech, but I said, wait a minute. One of my coaches told me that you couldn't win a speech. You couldn't read a speech. And so after the contest, I called her. I said, Margie, you told me that we couldn't read a speech. I spent all of these hours memorizing my speech, losing sleep. I could have been sleeping, and this fell up there reading his speech. You said we couldn't do it. She said, Henry. Did he win? No, ma'am, he did not. Okay, what's the problem? <laughs> See, he was more talented than I was, just as a speaker, just as to look at him and to listen to him. But man, I got up there and delivered my speech with no notes, body language, using the stage, all these kinds of things. And it wasn't that the judges don't want you to read a speech, they just understand the difference between talent and preparation. You will be rewarded for preparation. You will be rewarded. And listen, most of the time, talent is the will to practice. Most of the time. You will get better at something the more you practice. So I won that level of the competition and, uh, you know, I was pretty excited. I have this Thing. I posted it on Facebook. Sharon Johnson's not here, but she threw this back in my face the other day, too. I seem to remember a quote from this guy named Hank Roses on Facebook. That's my pseudonym, Hank Roses. Listen to this quote. It says, you might be more talented than I am, but you won't be more prepared. I don't have anything to do with whether the Lord gave you five and gave me two, Amen. or gave you ten and gave me three, but I do have control over how prepared I am. That's what I have control over. So being prepared, being prepared, prepared takes preparation. You have to have a plan and you have to be willing to endure the pain of implementing that plant plan. Hard work. You might lose sleep. You might not be able to eat when you want to eat. You might not be able to go out and, and, and do the things that you normally did when you need to be in the house studying and practicing your craft. But listen, hard work leads to prosperity, according to Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 5. So, I will read this portion. I, I just get excited when I read this, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Jesus set an awesome example about what it means to work hard towards a plan. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily hinders our progress, and let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. Somebody say endurance. endurance. We do this by keeping our eyes, listen to this, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, on whom our faith depends from start to finish. He was willing to die a shameful death on the cross because of what? The joy.